Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'gfiru Wa nu'minu bihi wa natawakkalu alayhi Wa na'udhu billahi min shurur anfusina Wa min sayyati a'malina من يهده الله فلا مذل له ومن يذلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله فقال الله تعالى بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خص إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم في الحديث الدنيا سجن المؤمن وجنة الكافر صدق الله وصدق الرسول ونحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين. A building like this building we are in here today. It is such a structure that each part it supports each the next part that it is built upon. From the beginning of the building, from the beginning of the structure of the building to the end of that structure of the building, each part supports the next part. From the piles on the ground, it is built in such a manner that it is connected with the flooring of the ground when the flooring goes down. And the flooring is built in such a manner that it, is, it connects to the posts of the building. It is not independent from the previous part. It is built in strength. And the roof of that building, the structure of the roof is connected to the pillars of the building. And the walls of the building is built in such a manner that the bricks are interlined with each other to give it strength so that it is full, that it holds strong. And the purpose of this is that the entire building, when it is completed, it has this strength and it is held up by itself it is not to weaken and if one of these parts of the building it is displaced it is placed independent from the next part if the piles on the ground is not interlocked with the flooring of the building what would happen you would find the possibility that the building may collapse it may slide because it is not holding on to the, the part before it And if one part is weak, then it would be seen in another part of the structure, another part of the building. <clears throat> and how true is the words of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he mentions Al Mu'minu Lil Mu'mini Kal Bunyan. The believer, Al Mu'min Lil Mu'min. One believer to another believer is like a building. I, one part, the believer to another believer is like a building. Yashuddu ba'aduhu ba'adha. 
part of it supports the other part it strengthens the next part just like how one part of a building strengthens the next part of a building for the entire building to hold strong to hold together to be sturdy similarly nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam says and the words of nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is true that the believer strengthens the next believer he supports the next believer similarly the human body it is not like a building but it is more structural it is way more complex than a building it cannot be placed together by a man it cannot be made by man and just as the building supports one part of a building supports another part of the building the human body one part of the human body supports the next part of the human body and i if one part of the human body it is in pain it is it hurts i we are all human beings from time to time we experience pain we experience a headache we experience some sort of hand ache we experience some sort of foot ache and then at this moment in time our head is not the only part of our body that is affected by the speed but our entire body is unable to function as it should be able to function if we have a foot ache is it simple for us to get up and function as we normally do i know and these this brings the light to the words of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam i just like a body al muslimun ka rajulin wahidin the muslims the muslims is like one man the entire nation of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is like one man Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is comparing the entire of the believers just like how a body functions a human body functions in in ishtaka aynuhu ishtaka kullu if his eye hurts just as the human eye hurts then the entire body hurts i if one portion of the believers is in pain if they are in suffering if they are in some sort of situation that is bringing them grief then the entire muslims too should be feeling this grief i wa in ishtaka ra'suhu ishtaka kullu and if the head hurts then the entire body should feel this pain as well Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam is comparing the muslim ummah like a human body if one part of the body hurts then the entire body feels the effect if one part of the ummah hurt then the entire ummah should feel the effect this is the connection this is the brotherhood that nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam instilled in the believers This is the brotherhood this is the connection that Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam instilled in his ummah Aba an wallah by Allah if we are seeing this grief going on in the world some part anyway wherever it may be in the east in the west in the north or the south and you are not and we are not affected by this we do not feel the pain we do not feel the grief of our believing muslim women and muslim men we do not feel or we are not affected by their suffering then by allah we need to check our iman we need to check ourselves we need to rectify ourselves we need to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves I the solidarity of the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam I I where we need to be 
as opposed to the way we really are in society. Such a small community, Trinidad, one masjid here, the amount of individuals sitting here can easily be counted. And if we check whether it be this location or another location, how many disputes would we find going on because of simple matters, because of an error we cannot overlook, because of our own weakness, we cannot forgive another individual. Going back to the point, where we are as Muslims, where we are as believers, as opposed to where we really need to be. What Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is easy to talk, but it is difficult to practice and put into action. We may hear something today, it may affect our heart, but one hour later, it leaves our mind. We forget it in its entirety. And this is the haq of the words of Rasul of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whereby Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he mentions, Innama al mu'minuna ikhwa. Verily Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that the believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he did not say that the white or the black or the red or the pink or the straight or the curly is one brotherhood. We are stronger than that. We are closer to that than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us every single believer is one brotherhood. We are all connected. We are stronger than blood. Such is the strength of the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ay, such is the likes. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned in one hadith, إِذَا دَعَى الْمُسْلِمُ لِأَخِيهِ بِظَحْرِ الْخَيْءِ When a Muslim makes a dua for his brother, for another Muslim who is absent, who is not in his presence. Be sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is telling us, he is teaching us. Ay, uh, an angel, angel pass, call al-malik, and the angel says, Ameen. The angel says, Ameen to this dua. And a similar reward may be for you. In another hadith, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, Al-Muslimu akhu al-Muslim la yadlimuhu wa la yuslimu. That a Muslim is a brother to another Muslim. لا يظلمه he does not oppress him nor does he forsake him Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us how to live as Muslims how to live with our brothers in Islam we do not oppress our brothers we do not forsake our brothers in Islam In another hadith, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yet again, such is the strength of this brotherhood, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he is instilling in, in this ummah the similitude of the believer in relation to kindness, mercy, and compassion they have, that they have for each other is that of the body again going back to the body a perfect example this is how we need to be as muslim as believers 
As those who believe in La ilaha illallah, believe in the oneness of Allah, and believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last and final messenger. We need to act as one body. And these are not my words. These are the words of our beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I, when one organ falls ill, the rest of the body responds with fever and sleeplessness. Such is the words of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear gathering, this is the strength of our ummah. This is the brotherhood that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has created and instilled in the Muslims. When we see pain, when we see hardship of our Muslim brothers around us or those who we have never met, how do we feel? Do we sleep at peace at night? Or do we feel restless? Do we feel any sort of uneasiness in our life? My dear brothers and sisters, the Ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is in a crisis. For almost two months, we have seen the oppression going on. Mass murder. The date since two months back, about 15,000 innocent people has died. A genocide has taken place. Innocent men, women and children are dying every single day. Daily, children are becoming orphans. Women are becoming widows. And yet still, in this situation, Wallah, the people of Palestine, they are still strong. They can still stand. They can still withstand. And they can accept the decree of Allah. Put ourselves in this situation. If we were to go through a little hardship, not anything like this, but something, a little portion of it, what would be our situation? We know ourselves, we like to complain very quickly. We are put into this situation. We are big talkers. Put our foot in their shoes. How would we be able to withstand this? What is our true strength as believers? And the people of Palestine, they know where they stand. But where... Does the rest of the two billion people in this world, where do they stand? Where do we stand? Are we sleeping comfortable every night that goes by? Or are we making dua for our brothers and sisters who are being oppressed? And what is the severity of this? We are seeing every single day. Sometimes by the hundreds, sometimes by the thousands. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us, Man qatala nafsan bi khayri nafsan aw fasadin fil ard. Whoever kills an individual unjustly, فَكَأَنَّمَا قَتَلَ النَّاسَ جَمِيعًا It is as though that one killing does the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is comparing it as though the entire of mankind has been killed. Such is the severity of taking one life unjust. And up till this day, over 15,000 has been killed for what reason? The in ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is suffering, my dear brothers and sisters. Aye, but what is the reality of the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? These people who have passed, who have suffered, who have died, the young, the old, what is their reality? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned, that a person who dies in this condition, 
A person who dies for the sake of Allah and that person is a martyr. Aye, that person is promised and is guaranteed a Jannah. The life hasn't gone in vain. The life may have ended in this world, but the reality is they are in a much better place. We see social media, so many videos, so many, I wouldn't say the news because majority of the news, it doesn't tell the truth. So we got a lot of information on social media and we see the videos and how hurtful it may be. When we see people dying, people burying their mother, their father, siblings burying siblings such as the likes of what is taking place you see a little child covered in rubble and there is barely even water to give this child just a few days ago we seen a video after 27 days such as the miracles of Allah such as the power of Allah a child has been dug up from under the rubble after 27 days. A very young child, perhaps less than a year, months old. And this child has been taken out of the rubble alive and well. Not crying, but smiling. Such is the greatness of Allah. Allah sustains whomever He wishes. It means that we cannot even think about. And so many things can be mentioned that we have witnessed. The dead, a young half is, we see the video, a young half is passed away. And we've seen so many people, people just gathering, wiping their hands and rubbing it on their body. And they're swearing by Allah that this child, he smells like musk. Such is the haq of the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The reality of it that they are witnessing. So the question remains, what do we do in this situation? We are so from far away. And we will be limited in what we can do. But we are not out of options. There are many things that we can do where we are. First and foremost. We make dua. Like how we make dua for our friends, for our family, for the sick. We make dua for the Muslims that are suffering. For the people of Palestine that are suffering. We make dua for them. And we make dua that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants them victory over the oppressors of this world. Secondly, we stay away from our sins. And by, and by doing so, we are keeping our way from the wrath of Allah. And encourage, we are encouraged to do good actions. As a result, it would bring about the mercy and it would attract the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thirdly, we pray for the cause of Palestine. Why? Because in Palestine lies Masjid al-Aqsa. And Masjid al-Aqsa, we know the greatness of Masjid al-Aqsa. That was the first Qibla that we prayed towards in this world. Masjid al-Aqsa is the third most holiest place that exists in this world. Many people leave their home in the past to go there and perform salah. It is very rewarding. Masjid al-Aqsa is where Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our Rasul, led the entire of the prophets in salah. Such is the greatness of Masjid al-Aqsa. Such is the significance of Masjid al-Aqsa. Fourthly, we support in any way possible. Whether it be physical, financial, or by simply making dua, do not forget and do not forsake because a Muslim is not a person who forsakes his fellow Muslim brothers and sisters. My dear brothers, 
and sisters, this is not a war. This is oppression. This is an illegal occupation that is taking place. A war suggests that both sides are on equal footing, and in no way this is the case. And the Palestinians here are being painted as terrorists for defending our own, for their own homes. Think about it. If someone comes into one of our homes and say today, I own this house, this is not yours anymore. I will use your house and I will eat your food and you cannot do me anything. You cannot put me out. What would be your stance? They are telling you you cannot defend your home. You know your rights. They are defending their rights in Palestine. And we need to show them support in whatever way possible. <coughs> Six. Another point. We do not act upon emotions. Because emotions can lead an individual astray. Emotions can take someone from the right path and make them do something which is wrong. Such is the like of emotion. But rather, we need to act under guidance. We need to be level-headed when we do what we do. We cannot take ourselves from a good position. And because of in emotions, we end up in a bad situation, in a worse situation. We make something worse for ourselves or for someone around us. And remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has a plan. And the plan of Allah is the best plan. Wallahu khayral makineen And the people they plan And Allah has his plan And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners In every of life occurrences A lesson for everyone Including myself first and foremost Is always two sides to every story And there is always two outcomes Something may happen and we would see the bad, but there's always something good that you can pick out from it. Some after effect or some lesson. And there are many good of what is happening in Palestine. Even though there is the suffering, what are some of the goods that is taking place? Each and every person that has been killed in Palestine, they understand for Jannah. Isn't that good for them, my dear brothers and sisters? Isn't that a great reward for them? <coughs> Such a great fitna is taking place. But what is happening around the entire world? The Muslims around the entire world are more united than everyone here has ever probably witnessed in their entire life. We are seeing Muslims from every part of the country coming together. Working together for this cause. It is bringing the, the Muslims together. I, we are even seeing the non-Muslims standing with the Muslim. Because this is beyond the Muslim, but this is humanitarian, right? Even the, the non-Muslims, how many times we see they posting up videos showing proof that they have converted and accepted Islam because of the strength on the, and the solidarity of the Muslims around the world. Of not acting on the emotion and riling up ourselves. I just today I saw a video of prisoners being released from Palestine. And wallah, I watched that video several times to understand what is really taking place. I watching this video in being in another language. You would not be able to tell that these are prisoners being released. It seemed as though they were good friends. They were happy. They were smiling. It seemed as though it was a bittersweet moment for them who were leaving so-called prisoners. And as a result for this cause and effect is always a good and a bad. 
We are seen in them occupied territory. The people who are occupying the, the citizens of that place, the people who are living there, they are now protesting. Free all the prisoners that we have taken, that our leaders, our so called warriors, have taken. Free them. Because of how good the Muslims treat their prisoners. My dear brothers, another good, I, the Ummah, is encouraged to do good and stay away from sin. Finally, <clears throat> the last point to be mentioned, and last but not least in any way, if the call is made to go out in the path of Allah, are we ready to accept that call? This has never been omitted, and no, it, no will it ever be omitted from the Quran, from the laws of Islam. Are we ready? It is easy to say yes, everyone here can say yes. But are we ready to give our lives to Allah? Ask ourselves this. See where we really are. See where we are right now. As opposed to where we really need to be in life. As a Muslim. As a mu'min. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give me the tawfiq of these few words. To give you the tawfiq of these few words. To give us the ability to stay away from wrong, the ability to do that which is good, the ability and the courage to do that which is right, and to stand up against oppressors when the time comes. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you, to bless me. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all from the fire of Jahannam and guard us all together as we have guarded today in the gardens of paradise aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa lis sa'ir al muslimin fastaghfiruhu innahu huwal ghafurur rahim